All right, good morning. The committee on parole is called to order today. It's Thursday, March 30th. My name is Brendan Kelsey. Along with me is Ms. Cheryl Nata. Mr. Alvin Rocha will be a panel of staff and support to at DOC headquarters in Baton Rouge. Our remote location is Lafayette for, uh, Parish Correctional Center with staff and support at Lafayette. Please introduce yourself. Good morning. My name is Deputy Joseph. Well, good morning. Thank you for being here. Yes, uh, we're ready for the first case. Please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. Uh, Carl Jago, uh, DOC number is. I can't see it in the back. Five, six, seven, zero, four, four. All right, Carl, you heard the introduction. We'll have a, a parole revocation hearing. We'll ask some rule violations. You can plead guilty, not guilty, guilty with a statement, or not guilty with a statement. We'll uh, ask some questions. You can respond at the end. You can uh, make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. Do you have a parole revocation questionnaire in front of you? Yes, sir. Is that your signature at the bottom? Yes, sir. All right. Can you can read and write? Yes, sir. Can you read and write? Yes, sir. All right, Carl Jocano, DOC number five six seven zero four four. Rule number one: You fail to report upon release of your technical violation within forty eight hours as ordered by the parole board. How do you plead? I plead uh, guilty to that one. Okay. Number two: You fail to report since your lack. You fail to report since your release in May twenty twenty two for your technical revocation. How do you plead? Not guilty. Not guilty. You failed to provide your officer with a change of address and made your whereabouts unknown. How do you plead? I guess. Same address. You failed to refrain from criminal activity when, when on or about 9-21-2022 you committed the offense of domestic abuse battery. The charge was refused on 10-26-2022. How do you plead? Not guilty. Okay. Number nine, you failed to agree to visits by your officer at home or elsewhere when you made your whereabouts unknown. How do you plead? I guess. Special conditions. You were given in, in, in place of being revoked, you were given special conditions to stay away from Sarah Richard. You failed to stay away from Sarah Richard as ordered by the parole board on or about 9-21-2020. Two, when you committed the offense of domestic abuse battery where she was the victim. How do you plead? Not guilty, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. Tell me why you failed to report, number one. You said you pled guilty to that. Why did you fail yeah. to report within 48 hours? Yes, sir. Um, well, the Sarah person had stole my vehicle um, while I was in jail last time. And uh, I tried to call my parole officer several times. And leave messages to let her know I couldn't make it to see if she could have came by my house or came pick me up or anything. And I never could, never got in touch with her. She, uh, her, her answer machine is all, is always full. You can't leave a message. And I would call the uh, parole board and laugh here when you call and to talk to the supervisor. It, it makes you press the number zero. I mean, you press it, the phone hangs up on you. What? So, I, wait, so how do you have Sarah's not? You, you had say you called Sarah. You said no, the parole office. My parole what? office. And how do you know Sarah stole your car? How do you know Sarah? You said you this Sarah person. Sarah had stole my car while I was in jail from my, uh, my parents' house. And I, I have a police, uh, the police report and everything uh, on that. She got arrested for stealing my car. Uh, but uh, that, that's why I couldn't, I didn't have a way to get to uh, the, my parole meeting or whatever. And I tried to call my parole officer, see if she could have came pick me up or could have met with me at my, at my house. But she never answered the phone. I never could get in touch with her. That's the only reason I had, I didn't make it. Well, tell me about your special conditions. Why do you stay away from Sarah? Because I mean, you act like you kind of don't know her, but obviously you know Sarah because yeah. you were yeah. ordered last time to stay away from. Her. Correct. That's my ex girlfriend. Uh, I was I did stay away from her. She showed up at my I was at my cousin's house and she showed up over there acting crazy and everything. And I'm going to have my cousin call the cops on her. And when she was getting arrested, she told the cops that I hit her, and I never touched that woman, and I got arrested for her. But I have, I had, we were not together anymore. She showed up at my family's house. 
and we had the cops call it on her. And then, then the cops just arrested you? Well, after she told the cop that, after she told the, the officer that I hit her, which I never touched her at all, they automatically arrested me, arrested both of us, sir. I mean, that, that was a, a specific rule. Stay away from her. Don't, you know, if she comes to where you come, you leave. I mean, that's kind of what, what you were told last time. If she shows up somewhere, you leave. Right. Yes, sir. That's but, why I had the cops called, to, to, you know, to because uh, she wasn't supposed to be there. Yes, sir. And then, you, then you've been in a relationship with her for a while, obviously, because you had the last issue. Yes, sir. We were together for uh, three years. We were, yes, sir. So, what's your relationship with her now? Now we don't. We don't even talk. No, we don't. That's nothing. <laughs> uh, there's, there's no relationship at all. We, it's been broke up since the, the first time, sir. She just what showed up. What happens when you get out again and she comes back around? Uh, she ain't gonna come back around. Uh, she got arrested. She got arrested this time too. So I don't. I don't think she's gonna come around. I'm hoping she don't come around, sir. Because I really, I don't think she's gonna come around. How long were you out there before this happened? It was three months. The, after, after the first time I got arrested for this, I was out for three months, and she shows up, and, and and I was right back in here for for twice for something. I I, I never touched that woman. She she has medical issues with uh, bipolar and stuff. She takes medicine, and when she does not take her medicine, she she. That kind of goes loony, I guess you want to call it. But uh, it was written on the, the last police report and stuff, how she admitted to it, not taking her medicine and stuff. And she admitted it last time. What were you doing while you were out? What were, you, were you working somewhere? What were you doing? Well, I was just, I, in fact, I had an interview uh, the following week at, uh, at a paint body shop. But uh, before that, the whole month, I was with the cops trying to find my vehicle and, and all my stuff she had stole. And uh I wasn't working yet, sir. How long have you been have you been in jail since on this since you got picked up? This time it's it's been over six months. And the, the first time was uh four months. And both times the charges have been dropped and 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 you, uh, I'm see you. You're out for three months, and you didn't, you didn't get a job in three months. Uh, I had an interview, my job interview. I, I, I climbed communication towers. It's my career, but uh, I have to change my career because of uh, parole and stuff. So I'm trying different, different careers. I guess I'm, I'm trying to get a yeah. paint my career. Right. But I can't see climbing communication towers. Is it's always out of state, and I can't travel anymore. So I right. that's you you kind of did that to yourself, huh? Yes, sir. I messed up my career. Yes, sir. So what's your plans if you were to be released? Where are you gonna go? What you gonna do? First thing I'm gonna do is is get a, get to the parole office, talk to my parole officer, and then I gotta try to call these people that I did have an interview with for my job and get a job first. So, and I, well. The first thing I'm gonna do is see about my mom. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I'm not gonna lie. My mom's in the hospital, not doing good. That's the first thing I want to go do is make sure she's okay, and then I'm gonna see my pro officer and get and get a job, sir. Well, I hope your mom gets better, but you probably need to see your pro officer first. I think that'd probably be the smartest thing. Yes, sir. You're right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah, well, like I said, you know, it, it is concerning that the board did give you the opportunity to to, to stay away from from this. Uh, yeah. Y'all back together, y'all y'all back back arguing and fighting or whatever you do. All right. No, sir, we're not back together. We went back together last time. Like I said, she showed up at my family's house, raising all kind of hell, and I had my cousin call the cops on her, and she was going to jail. And I don't know what she told the cops. Apparently, I hit her. And I got it. When I noticed something, I'm getting handcuffs on me too. And, but I've never, I don't, I don't hit women. I'm sorry. And I've never been, and I, they, they always been dropped because I've never, I don't do that. And she just, she needs help. <laughs> so I, I'm not the person to help her. So I got to stay away from her. 
Sound like everybody needs help. Sound like you need help too. No, just I gotta stay away from her. Like she's out there. She's. Well, you were with her for two years, and you didn't know that, or more than two years, right? Three, three years, sir. Yes, sir. When she's on her medicine. She was on her medicine. She was. She's okay. But when she don't take it, yeah, she loses it. Uh, I have no further questions. Um, you like to make a statement on your behalf? You like to make a statement on your behalf? Uh, yeah, uh, I would just like to say that we are, I'm no longer with Sarah. I, I wasn't last time. She you just came around. You know, I had to, I called the cops. I just, I'm ready to go home. Um, I don't, I, I'm ready to get my life on. I mean, this six months has been long and I did everything I thought I was supposed to do, except I didn't make it to my parole, but I've been on parole for six years now. And I I, I, mean, I don't have any charges. I've never been in trouble besides this. I, I've been doing my parole for six years, right? I, I missed these, these three months because I hadn't had a vehicle, but I plan on fixing all that. I will go see my parole officer. I haven't been doing anything bad. I really haven't for six years. I haven't gotten in trouble since 2012, sir. Uh, all right, panel, fair to vote. Yes, I'm going to vote. Uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to vote. Uh, you know, look, I, there, I, there's, there's some belief. I look. I read the reports in there. I read the information about what was seen and not seen, shown and not shown. Um, I, I'm going to vote to do not revoke your parole, and I want you to get a domestic debop, uh, domestic violence. Um, program 26 week program i want you to uh take anger management and i want you to have no contact with sarah richard now look the same similar than you had before so if you're back again then, then don't don't even just look just just do your time but i this is me i'm not i'm only one vote i'm just telling you today i guess i'm in a good mood today because I, I i tend to believe what you're telling me i read the information what i read uh, disappointed that you weren't able to stay away from her when you were ordered to do that but this is, this is I, I was going to revoke you when I started, but this is what I chose to do. Do not revoke DVOP 26 uh, week program, anger, take anger management, no contact with Sarah Richard. Mr. Knott. Uh, Mr. Jack, no, my position is different. You were given an opportunity uh, back in May of last year. You violated the condition order by the, um, by the parole board. You pled guilty to violating condition number one. I find you guilty of violating condition number 13. My vote today is to revoke the parole. Mr. Uh, Roche. Uh, Mr. Jackano, good morning. Good morning. My position is the same as Mr. Nazar. You were given a direct order by this board and have no contact with Sarah. Yes, sir. And you were told if she came into your space, you should leave that space immediately. But they had a verbal altercation, maybe a physical, I don't know. But you were in contact and you were in direct uh, defiance of an order given to you by this board. I find you guilty of violating special condition 13 and you pled guilty to condition number one. Therefore, I'm going to revoke your supervision. All right, you have two votes to revoke and one to do not revoke today. Your parole's been revoked. Good luck to you. We'll adjourn at 826 uh, from Lafayette. They revoked. They revoked, yeah. Well, let me share an article with you about what initially got him in here. He was called the So the Daily News here, they called him the Zombie Apocalypse. Louisiana man car bites ex-wife's husband's face, removes a chunk of his skin. So, you know, it it's not fair to judge someone on their worst day. And it was believed to be bath salts that he was on at the time. They didn't blood test him, so they don't know for certain. Um, 
I don't know what they keep uh, hitting me with this pop up. Um, it's quite obnoxious. It's like, no, I don't, I don't want to log in and I took my app blocker off. So please stop doing this pop up. Um, zombie apocalypse lurches on. I think this was the time when there was a lot of these bath salts, uh, attacks. If you remember when that was happening, um, but it was, it was, he basically attacked his ex. He went to his ex-wife's house. Now this is June of 2012. Gosh, this is just annoying. Um, you know, I can, I can probably pull up the Fox article. Let's see, um, I'll pull up a different one. But it, it basically, it says that he went to the house, started, f here, I'll put this one here instead. This is a picture of him at the time. Um, so he was arrested after allegedly biting a chunk out of his face, acquaintance of an, acqu of an acquaintance. Well, it wasn't the acquaintance, it was his ex-wife's uh, boyfriend, according to the other article. Um, during the melee, he bit a chunk of his face. He described the fight as being a domestic dispute. Police arrested him later at his home. Police um, say the suspect was under the influence of drugs. That's certainly because the blood test wasn't. The other article had more information, so I can I can just read it to you, but not show it to you because I don't know why I can get it on my other computer, but not. I have two computers running because my laptop doesn't can't run both. Um, so what it says here. And I'm going to read to you from the other news article, which I'll put in the description, is that he showed up at his ex-wife's house on June 2nd, a violation of an order of protection she had taken out against him. So he he she had taken out an order of protection and he'd gone there anyways. So this is like, you know, I guess you can take that into account by hearing about how his rejection at this time. Um and again, this is back, this is what the initial offense for what he, I believe is in 2012, what I believe he's serving, um, what he was just revoked on, I think. I don't, it's hard to know because it says he's been out for six years. This was in 2012, so I'm not, well, we'll see. Um, he attacked Todd Cridor, her current husband. Okay, so he attacked her current husband um, and then repeatedly bit his face. We saw what his face looked like, removing a flesh size of a quarter, the affidavit David said. He was working in his front yard when he was attacked by him, adding that he was shocked when his face was bitten. Then, <laughs> kind of in defense, he sprayed hit him with, um, with wasp spray. So he's sitting on his lawn, minding his own bit, you know, doing yard work. He gets attacked by this crazy guy on bath salts who bites his face off. And he has wasp spray, sprays it in this guy's face. This guy's now covered in wasp spray. He's on bath salts. He's like zombieing out. Um, but his blood thirst was not apparently satiated, says the article. So he went to a friend Billy's house, held him at knife point. Okay, so after he bit this guy's face, he left after getting sprayed with wasp spray, held his friend Billy at knife point and said, I'm going to kill you unless you tell me where your dad's gun is. He left his house with the gun and then was finally arrested at a dead end street nearby. A friend told the, the uh, news source that he believed he was on bath salts. Uh, the same drug Miami cannibal Rudy Eugene took before eating Ronald Popo's face. Um, off down to the goatee on Memorial Day. Yeah, this was like that bath salts thing. Now, what's interesting is that he was held on bond at Lafayette Parish Jail, the same jail he's in now, 
It says for three hundred and twelve thousand dollars. I don't know. Maybe he, maybe they lowered the bail, or maybe he had a home he put up. Um, but and then maybe he got out, and then he had trial, or he took a plea deal and served time, and then after serving some time, got out on parole. But the bottom line is, is that like to you know, probably I would have said. You know, he was six years not getting in any trouble, take it easy on him. But when you read this kind of stuff, it's like, dude, stay away from her, man. Like, you got issues, bro. You got issues. She's your ex-wife. She doesn't want anything to do with you. Like, just stay away. So, you know, in that sense, it's scary. I kind of, I couldn't imagine being her or anyone who even knows her, it's just terrifying that this crazy, you know, guy is just obsessed um, and dangerous. Uh, and then he would put everything on the line to violate it. So in this case, and after with this details, I'm, I'm, I think that's definitely the right move. Um, you know, what the saying is, do stupid things win stupid prizes. Um, or can't fix stupid, right? But man, anyways, with that, I'll let you go.